Uh, I've been running uh, pretty much steadily since um, 2009, late 2009. Uh, I had stopped running for many years, and I picked it up again, uh, partly to lose weight. But then as I lost weight and uh, got, a, got some mileage under my belt, uh, I started running in 5Ks, and currently I, I'm running marathons. I, uh, the reason for this video is that I've, I've been on YouTube um, today and yesterday, and I came across uh, some videos, uh, you know, trying to, to tell people when they should change or get, new, get a new pair of running shoes. And, um, you know, the common wisdom is that you, uh, you know, you wear a pair of running shoes for about 500 miles and then you get a new pair because, you know, the, um, the foam interior that gives you the cushioning, basically all those little air bubbles wear out and yada, yada, yada. Well, I got news for you. I've been running um, in New Balance running shoes uh, using their stability model, which currently I think is still a 1260. But I I started wearing New Balance running shoes and have been running them, have been wearing them, and buying them and wearing them until this fall. And I'll get into that later too. But um, I keep track of all the mileage that I do, whether I walk in these shoes or whether I run in them, and then I keep a 14-day moving average. To make sure that based on the 14-day moving average, that I'm getting you know a sufficient amount of mileage uh, on a daily basis. I typically run five to six days a week, eight miles a day. So I'm putting in 40 to 48 miles a week. Call it 40 to 50. These shoes have at least 2,200 miles on them each. Now I wear the new. I, I have worn the New Balance 1260s, and before that the 1226, and before that the 1225. I've been wearing the New Balance Stability Shoe because my right foot overpronates, my left foot does not. And, you know, seeing these videos on YouTube within the last couple days about, you know, when to get a new pair of shoes and what the wear pattern means basically pissed me the hell off. And when I tell the, uh, the uh, shoe store sales clerks, you know, that I, you know, basically put a couple thousand miles on a pair of shoes every year, they sort of look at me like I'm uh, sort of out of it. But I guarantee you that, you know, I keep track of my daily mileage, whether I walk in these shoes or run in them, I keep track of them, uh, I keep track of my mileage on a spreadsheet. Uh, and I guarantee you that, uh, I didn't check for these guys, these are the 1260 V3s. Uh, I use them as slippers around the house now. But the 1260 V5s, I use them when it's uh, raining outside. And I guess the same thing can be said for the V6s too. This, uh, these are the 1260, 1260 V6s. I didn't buy the 1260 V7 this fall because when I tried it on, I felt like a racing flat. It did not feel like a stability shoe. The New Balance 860 uh, is, a, is a very moderate, light, overpronator shoe, and it basically didn't help me. The, I think the closest shoe that New Balance currently has in the market that, is, that really should be used for severe overpronators, which is what I need for my right foot, is the New Balance 990. Now, I didn't buy that because it felt very clunky and heavy. So I currently run in Brooks... Uh, adrenaline GTS 17s and they're not as good as what New Balance made for a severe overpronation for a stability shoe. Um, these shoe companies, I swear to God, they change every year, every year they change, they, they monkey around with the formula and I believe that the, the, I think the best when it came to speed was the V3s. So I, I've worn the 1225, the 1226, I skipped the V1, I, I've worn the 1260 V2, V3, the V4 I think I still have somewhere, probably collecting dust, the V5, the V6, and, I, and as I said, I, I didn't buy the V7. The V7 really feels like a racing flat, does not feel like a stability shoe. Um, and the V6 was disappointing for a number of reasons that I'll get into also later. But um, what I wanted to show you was the wear pattern on a pair of running shoes that get a couple thousand miles a year. And every year, I only really, really wear one pair of shoes. If it rains, I'm going to wear these guys, and you'll see why. Uh, if I go for a long walk and after running, I'll wear these guys. Um, so let me look at, let's look at the uh, 1260 V3s. Let me turn these guys over. Okay. So I don't know if you could see this in the light. Uh, okay, this is, this is the right, this is the right, uh, right uh, foot. Okay. So, you know, you've got a... Um, I mean, it's worn in the middle, I mean in the center where the ball of the foot is, which is sort of where you expect it. On my left foot, which is normal, but wearing these stability shoes, the wear pattern is, it's also on the ball of the foot, but there's a lot of wearing on the uh, edge, on the edge. 
And I think what we, and, and the and the forefoot. And I think what happens is that as I run, uh, the stability shoe basically what ha what happens is that they have an insert here, and this one does not have its insert because I wear them as slippers around the house. But the insert sort of takes your foot and sort of moves it about four degrees off. So that as you heel strike with a, a an overpronated foot, instead of sort of being in the position to already roll off, the insert sort of and the, the the shoe itself, I guess, it sort of moves your foot a little bit, like about four degrees. So that when you heel strike, you sort of heel strike normal, and then you roll off the ball of your foot. The consequence of that, of course, is that for my normal left foot, I'm going to get sort of like a uh, this weird. I get this weird outside the um, outside the edge wear. And you can see in the center that the, on the ball of the foot, that area, you know, there's the wear there. The heels, I really don't get a lot of heel. I mean, I do get a little bit, but not a lot of uh, heel wear and tear. Okay. So those are the 1260 V3s. These are the V5s. Now these, are, now these I got to hand it to, um, to New Balance. The 1260 V5s, they were, they were okay. I mean, they were good. I mean, they, they, they wrapped around my foot a little bit better, a little bit more of a snug but not tight uh, feeling. Uh, the, I think the V3s were probably the best they ever made because it was a good compromise between having them feel like you could run fast versus the stability that you got. Uh, but I'm going to show you the wear pattern on the V5s. And I don't know how well this is going to come out. Let me, let me, let me go with the right foot, the, the foot that I, that I overpronate on. There's a lot of wear and tear on the shoe. I mean, I've gone, I've gone down into like the foam, okay? But I still use these like when it rains. So, um, you know, um, these, uh, well, one of the problems with these shoes, modern day shoes, is that when they get wet, it takes forever for them to dry. So I have to use like a, a hair dryer for like an hour. And the inserts are even worse than the shoe when it comes to drying these guys out. But these V5s, 2,200 miles on them. They're still fine. They're still fine. I mean, I, I sort of get it. I, I get a new pair of shoes every year because, okay, um, you know, they get, they get a little gamey and, you know, you want to see what the, the newest uh, shoes are. I can still run these, and I do when it rains, okay? But look at the wear pattern on this guy. I mean, I've driven it down all the way to, you know, beyond the outer, the outer plate. This is the, uh, this is the left foot, my normal foot. As you can see, the wear pattern is different. Because my because the way that the the inserts in the shoe work, you know, I mean, if you're if you're over pronating on your foot, you're almost prepared to make a, a toe push off. Okay, you're sort of like this, and it really messes up when it comes to shock absorb absorption in your heel. Um, so the insert in the shoe sort of they get you out of this position about four degrees and they move you up a little bit. But the the problem is now my normal foot, and you're not supposed to monkey. You're supposed to use the same insert, the same shoe, for both feet. Uh, so now this guy is a little bit off, okay? Although I don't feel any pain in my left foot or ankle. Uh, but the wear pattern is different. And I'm going to turn these over at the same time so you can see a little better. This is a sort of a better uh, better representation because uh, the color scheme, you've got the yellow on the bottom uh, and then the, the darker yellow, the fluorescent yellow on the outside, the darker yellow on the inside. So this is my left foot. And there's an outer wear pattern here, an outer wear uh, you know, the outer part of it is, is worn down here more. Here, in the right foot, which is the overpronator, which has been corrected, you don't see any wear pattern on the outside, which is good. You see it here in the center. And the heels are... the heels look fine. I mean, the heels really don't seem, seem like they have a lot of wear and tear on them. All right, I weigh, I weigh about 150 to 160, 160 pounds. Um, you know, I run, when I run, when I jog, I, run, I jog at about a 10 minute mile pace, but I do my intervals, you know, once or twice a week. But, you know, these shoes, they've got 2,200 miles on them in the span of a year, okay? And yeah, they, they've got the wear and tear on the sole, but I can still run on these, okay? And they don't feel uncomfortable, yada, yada, yada. So this nonsense of you got to get a new pair of shoes every 500 miles, or you got to do this, you got to do that, is nonsense. I mean, I get a new pair of shoes once a year because it's about time. Plus, you know, I don't like to see, I really don't like to see this kind of wear and tear. I mean, I like to have, you know, uh, a shoe that's as, as good as possible, as new as possible. The V6s, the 1260 V6s were a disappointment. Uh, for one thing, I had a lot, well, I've had a lot of problems with these shoes, okay? And it took almost a full year to, to quote-unquote break them in. 
Okay, first things first, I, these shoes are all 10 E. Okay, and this, the last, or the, the mold that they used to build a shoe around, you know, the, the, the model, the wooden model of a foot, they're called Lasts, L-A-S-T, and they got different kinds, where, whether it's a walking shoe or, or a performance shoe, etc. I think they used the last that was just a bit too big because they were sort of, uh, sort of loose. I mean, not so loose that I couldn't wear them, uh, but I bought them anyway, you know, 10, 10 double E's. I've had nothing but problems with these shoes. First things first, um, I always got some, some kind of weird problem happening. Uh, for example, if you look here in the back, that's blood. Okay, that's blood. And one day I went jogging early in the morning, and I came back, and, you know, basically I had gotten some kind of a, I had worn through and irritated my, my skin where it bled. And I hadn't changed my running pattern or anything, and yet all of a sudden this thing was, you know, cutting into my skin. Uh, here you don't see that. Okay? Here, this shoe for some reason has worn out here. Here you don't see that. On my left foot for a while, actually towards the end of the, the, the uh, time of these shoes, on my left foot, here on the outside of the big toe, I got this really big callus. I did not get the same callus on this side. All I can think is that this, is a, this is, was a function of the fact that these shoes were just technically almost, but not quite, a half size larger than they should have been. Okay? So I would have had to go down half a size, which meant that the, I would have been, the shoes would have been too tight. Or I would have had to go to another uh, brand of shoe. Uh, and I had been wearing the New Balance Stability shoes since the 1225. So I ended up buying these. I said, okay, you know, blah, 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 the break in, whatever. And they're a good shoe when it comes to performance. They're a good shoe when it comes to durability. I'm going to turn them over. These shoes have 2,200 miles on them. You cannot tell that they have any real wear and tear on them. I mean, you can, and I'll show you, okay? So right here, right here, um, this is the right foot, which is my overpronating foot. I've got the, I've got the, the, it's worn down here in the center, okay, which is sort of where you want it to. No wear and tear on the outside. The heels are uh, pretty much pristine. Nothing wrong with them. Uh, but, but this has not worn its way through. Like the like the, the V5 did, okay? I've got 2200. Okay, sorry about that. Um, my right foot, which is my overpronating foot, as you can see, there's no wear and tear on the outside or the toe, okay? The any wear and tear is in the center, towards the ball of the foot, which is which means that this stability shoe is doing its job. But you cannot tell, you cannot look at these and tell me that they have 2200 miles on them. And I know they've got 2200 miles on them because I keep a spreadsheet, okay? I really didn't have to get a new pair of shoes, but I'd had these for about a year. And it's like, okay, it's the fall. Time to get a new pair of shoes. Uh, my, my left foot, which is my normal, normal foot, the wear and tear, you can see there's wear and tear on the, on the uh, tip and on the outer edge and also in the center. But other than that, and, and certainly, you know, there's no wear and tear. Even the heel's fine. And, you know, there, there's, this, is a, this was a better built shoe, except that they used the last that was too big. But, but please notice... These shoes have 2,200 miles on them. I could probably put, you know, God knows how many more miles, uh, except for the fact that I bought a new pair. Now, I'm currently wearing Brooks, Brooks, Brooks Adrenaline GTS 17s. They are allegedly Brooks' uh, best stability shoe. They're not as good as what New Balance has been making up until the V6. I think, I think the current shoe for New Balance is probably their 990. And then if you have moderate uh, overpronation, it's the 860. Uh, but I'm very disappointed with uh, with New Balance. Their their V7, their 1260 V7, to me felt like a racing flat. I did not get any feel that this was a good stability shoe. And they took out, they had some kind of a bar or something on the inside, a T-bar or whatever it's called, or whatever they how, whatever they do to, to stabilize the foot. They took that out. So I ended up going with Brooks instead. I'm very disappointed. And my walking shoes are New Balance. My running shoes are New Balance for how many years? I mean, it's really just amazing. But this nonsense. Did you have to change your shoes every 500, 300, now, now it's 300 to 500 miles, is absolute bullshit. Um, if you, you know, I run, I run on uh, city streets, on asphalt, on bike trails, pretty much most of my running, like 99%, of, 95, 99% of my running is on asphalt, okay? Some concrete, but I don't go on gravel, I don't go on crushed limestone unless I'm doing a race. Uh, and like I said, I weigh about 155, 160. Um, you don't need a new pair of shoes every 500 miles. Um, 
as far as I'm concerned, that's bullshit. Um, you know, these V3s, I use them as slippers around the house. I think I have the V4 somewhere, unless I threw them out. I probably threw them out. I probably threw the V4. I think I threw the V4s out. But, you know, when it, when it rains, I'm going to wear these guys. And you can see, you know, it's eaten, it's eaten, it's eaten its way through 2,200 miles, 2,200 miles, okay? I mean, these look like, you know, there's nowhere in tear. I mean, there is, but, you know, the outer layer is still intact. So, if they tell you you got to get a new pair of shoes every 300 to 500 miles, tell them to go, you know, stick it where the sun don't shine. And uh, that's my take on when you buy running shoes. I buy, I buy a new pair every fall. That's when they, I, I think they, they come out in July, and typically between Labor Day and uh, early October, I buy myself a new pair of shoes. So, I mean, my beef is finding a good shoe that uh, deals with my overpronation of my right foot. Uh, other than that, if it's a good quality shoe from a reputable company, uh, you should be able to crack out a couple thousand miles every year in one of these babies. Uh, I've got I've got 2,200 miles on these guys. I've got 2,200 miles on these guys. i got to go and check my spreadsheet on how much I've got on these guys when I wear my slippers around the house. So that's my two cents. Uh, don't buy just because people tell you you got to buy. You know, buy when you have to. Uh, and so on. So, thank you for your time.